Alright, so, this is the KV-1. It is, you know, a simple little, like, stunt fighter plane. Um, the biggest change, though, is that the engine is mounted on a gimbal, which means that that is the wrong slider. <laughs> Whoops. Hold on. Uh, eh, eh, eh. 100. Okay, the angle... No, that's the angle limit. Oh, I have it locked. That's why I can't change it. Yeah, so the target angle, yeah. It can, uh, it can hopefully do a VTOL. I, uh... Set it to locked right now, though, because it's going to start out locked and there's a control group to unlock it. However, I am noticing a key flaw. Ignore where the center of lift indicator is. The center of lift indicator lies, or at least it should be lying. We'll see. But um, I realized that, see, as part of the balancing process, I actually emptied all the fuel tanks on here and got the balance set up without any fuel on board. And now I want to refuel it with as little change to the center of mass as possible. So I'm actually going to go ahead and open up all of these. These are the four fuel tank groups that are on here. I say groups because some of them are actually multiple tanks. Let's go ahead and get this into its lock position. Yeah, because now we have the actual location that we will be at when firing the thrust when in the vertical mode. As you can see, this is not 100% lined up. It is slightly behind, but that is intentional. Although actually, so part of the secret to getting it to line up was this ore tank in the front. And I just realized, yeah, see, I'm not gonna change the level in the ore tank, but if I move it ever so slightly back, Oh my god, did all of those vanish even though I had them locked? That's stupid. In any case, if I move it ever so slightly back, this should be lined up... Uh, yeah, that should be lined up better. Yeah. Okay, so now I gotta open all of those back up again, which includes this one, which will probably be the easiest to fill, because it's nearly right on top, so I can fill it with the most fuel without adjusting the center of mass at all, which is pretty useful. All right, that seems to be about the right ratio. So the one in the very end is barely filled, even the tiniest amount, and the rest of these are filled full. Should maintain a good amount of ability there. Let's go ahead and fold this back up, lock it up, and we should be ready for launch. Let's go ahead and save that design. This is completely untested, by the way. In fact, I didn't even know how well I'd lined up the landing gear. It looks like they lined up better than I thought they would. So. The center of lift indicator, if I unadjusted the tail fins, would actually be pretty close to the center of mass. Uh, these complicate things ever so slightly by having a higher angle of incidence than the rest of everything. However, they shouldn't complicate things too much. But after that, I adjusted the tailplane, so the tailplane actually has a slight angle downwards. And the reason for that is because the engine sits below the center of mass even when locked. So. Theoretically, whoop. let me guess, you're liquid fuel deprived, yep. Okay, so I am going to have to insert some fuel lines in there. I think I'll gas it up from there to there. And here goes nothing. Good, we have good flow this time. Airflow, of course, does not rely on that, so the airflow was no issue to begin with. Should be able to go ahead and start pulling up off the ground at a fairly low speed because this plane does indeed have, well, very little mass relative to the wing area. There's quite a lot of wings on here. Um, it should be highly maneuverable. Not quite as highly maneuverable as I thought it would be, but then again it probably gets into higher maneuverability with the afterburner giving a little extra juice. And yet roll control is very good. Roll control does exactly what I want. It doesn't pitch as extremely as I would like it to. Ooh, ooh, okay, and I went a little lower than I meant to. However, it does a pretty good job, a pretty good amount of what I want it to. I'm going to go ahead and throttle down to one third because I'm now going to, if I've rigged up the controls right, nope, I hit, the, hit two to unlock them. And now I'm going to pitch the angle down. I'm going to hit two again to lock the motor in place, or lock the, what do you call it? Hinge thing. Yes, hinge lock the hinge in place, and now we should have vertical capability. Now the problem is the landing gear are not deep enough to allow you to actually land on this, at least not safely. You could theoretically do it, but it's not a great idea because the landing gear are 
Oh, we need to throttle up actually quite a bit. Okay. Okay. There we go. Of course, we can always hit the afterburner if I need to panic too much. As you can see right there. That helps us sort ourselves right out. And uh, actually, I am going to need to do that. As well as hitting two. And... Is it the... Nope. That... This way? This way? Okay. Throttle up. Pull up. Now hit two to lock it in place again. And... Yeah. I even recovered from a... Uh, bad idea. So, yeah. I actually quite like this, even though it's not as maneuverable as I wanted it to be. Um, which is probably due to the large amount of wings. Um, it's probably a bit heavier than I originally would have intended. And it's also... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? These tailplanes aren't moving as fast as they can. And the engine doesn't have a very strong gimbal capability because the engine is so close to the center of mass. That is the downside, of course, to having an engine ideally mounted for vertical lift like that, is that the engine is no longer ideally mounted for um, gimbal capabilities. So it does very little to change our maneuvering. Oops! Well, there goes one Kerbal. I didn't even see their name. I feel bad now. In any case, this is the KV-1, everybody. It works uh, slightly worse than I expected in one way and better than I expected in other ways, so um, enjoy.